So one day I'm just doing my job. I'm working at FEMA, I'm making like 85K a year, 80K a year. And one came across my desk and it was um, a $2.6 million grant for two years to install smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in a low income family homes I in West Virginia. <laughs> I just replaced my smoke, smoke detector battery <laughs> like two days ago. And I know how to, you know. I know how to do this. I'm, I'm telling you, I was like, I'm, I'm not special. But I was just like you. And all it takes is decisions. That's mm. it. You still have the opportunity to make decisions to be able to say, you know what? Damn, he came through all that. I can do it too. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing special about me. What's going on, millionaires? You're back for another episode of the Million Dollar Mind Podcast. I'm your guy, Kai Speaks. Here with my co-host, Heavy House Jazz. How you feeling, Jazz? I'm feeling amazing. Super excited about today's conversation. Likewise, like I heard y'all talking, me and Faust was talking before, you know, before you got here, Jazz, and um, just this brother gave me so many ideas that was right back to the things we've been talking about off camera, you know, in our strategy, strategy call, strategy meetings and stuff like that. And this brother has the blueprint, y'all, to like government contracts, you know, uh, grants, but more importantly, just the whole blanket is just creating opportunities for people that you care about, communities that you care about, um, you know, just organizational stuff in general. And a lot of us come here and we, we listen in and we like, I would love to create this opportunity for my family or I would love to create these jobs. Well, let me tell you, this guest we have in the building has the blueprint to how we can become that that beacon of opportunity for others. And that's why I'm super excited about this conversation. So without further ado, let me pass the mic and the camera off to our guest, Fox Wade. Fox, tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and you know how you became the man that you are today. Well, thank y'all so much for tuning in and thank y'all so much for having me on. Mm -hmm. um, been a blessing and a journey to be able to share um, this information to, to, to aptune listeners, yeah. to be able to take this information, digest it, and actually put it into action. Um, my journey is very diff different from everyone else's. Um, you know, me being a kid coming from the other side of the world at two years old, growing up in Flint, Michigan, out of all places. Mm -hmm. Who knows about Flint, Michigan? Mm -hmm. A lot of people know about Flint, Michigan yeah. for the highest crime rate, the highest um, uh, murders per capita. We're talking about the water crisis. Mm -hmm. We're talking about everything. And I grew up in that crazy like I grew yeah. up in that not knowing that I was growing up into something that was so crazy I remember being about six years old and I was on the street you know when you growing up in a low income area kids are outside we got basketball court basketball goal on the street with a milk carton mm. and I just remember we were outside we we're playing football and next thing you know everybody started running mm. I'm in the middle of the street I caught the ball and I'm like that supposed oh, to be running to I'm me. I'm like, y'all running, y'all, you know, I'm thinking y'all about to run to me. They, they started running off the street. And next thing you know, I look up and there's a guy coming down the street. He has a gun in his hand. Mm. And I'm like, oh, what is, so I turned around and was about to run the other way. But then there's another guy coming up the street. He got a gun and a dog. And next thing you know, they start shooting at each other. So I went off to the side, ran behind a tree. They shooting at each other. One guy goes down. One guy holds his shoulder. And next thing you know, the, the 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 guy with the dog, whatever, end up getting murdered. Wow! Right there in front of my eyes. Man. But I thought that was normal, because that wasn't the only one. Mm. We used to see crackheads stealing stuff down the street. You know, sirens. It's, you know, it's it was. I remember um, when I had finally left at 18. I joined the military, and I was in basic training. For the first night, I couldn't sleep. Cause I was so used to hearing chaos. I was so used to hearing police sirens. I was like, it's, it's so quiet, quiet. Wow. you know, crazy. Damn. Right. Yeah. So going back to that. So growing up in Flint, Michigan, Northside, uh, Weatherby street, it was chaotic. It was crazy. I uh, grew up in a household to where it was just, it was chaos in the household too. very abusive uh, mother, uh, stepfather. It was just, it was just crazy. Um, uh, but something inside of me always wanted something different. Right. Maybe it was because, you know, I kind of saw somewhat of different on other families, friends with that, that I had that something inside of me wanted something different. You know, all my friends growing up, they were selling drugs at teenagers and stuff like that. Mm. I'm like, yeah, I want a part of that. Yeah. You know? 
oh, we smoking weed. I'm like, yeah, I don't want no part of that either. You know, it's just something inside of me always wanted something different. Yeah. And I want to talk about that a little bit more too, Fox, because as you was telling that story, the story of you not sleeping, it reminded me of something that people don't talk about enough, which is like, that's like a form of PTSD. And I think a lot of people just associate PTSD with, you know, veterans and being in the military. But, you know, growing up in environments like that, you know, hearing gunshots all the time, sirens and everything like that, it causes this, it switches this trauma in your brain where now you learn to not trust people. You learn to not trust yourself. Uh, you learn to, like you said, look at things as this is normal. Um, and then it changes your whole worldview of, of things and how things should actually be. So at one point you thought this was just normal. What do you think switched it for you to where you did, like you said, wanted something more and didn't fall into that, that, that trend of this is normal. I'm going to follow suit. I'm going to become the statistic of what's normal. Well, it really didn't happen till later in life, honestly. Mm. And I know the exact age and date and time to where my brain switched. Mm. 29 years old, October 2nd. Um, I literally had like a, a moment, right? Wow. Cause I joined the military at 18 and I didn't join because I was a, wanted to be a Patriot. You know, I had some D1 basketball scholarships because even though I was good at basketball, I didn't know I was good at basketball. Mm -hmm. I had grew up with so much trauma mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. basketball yeah, was like... Escape. It was like my alcohol. It yeah. was like my marijuana. It was like my place I can get on the court and I can just be the best version of myself. But people were like, you know, you're good and da 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 And I'm like, I, I don't know. Okay. And so now these people are like, oh, you know, we got a scholarship. I'm not saying I was going to like a D1 school, like University of Michigan, something like that. But it was some good, decent ones to be like, hey, you can really play. And I'm like, I don't, what What am I going to do in college? Yeah. No one talked about college, you know. Wow. I got to go to college. I got to feed myself. Like, it was Survival. terrifying. Mm. And so at that moment, I was, I was homeless. So I, at that moment, I'm homeless. And, um, you know, I get all these people, you know, you know, they're doing all this stuff. And I'm like. I think I'm going to go do something else. So one of my friends was like, hey, I'm joining the Air Force. I was like, that don't sound too bad. You know, join the Air Force, you know, join the military. At least I know I can get a meal. I can get, you know, all that stuff. Get about the way you currently knew. at. Yeah, yeah, I can get away from that. And um, I tried to join the Air Force, and I scored so low on that test. They were like, listen, the only job we can give you is a cook. I was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so then I go to the Navy because it was all in a complex and they were all together. So I'm mm. like, all right, so let me walk over to the Navy, whatever. I go to the Navy and the Navy's like, yep, can you swim? I'm like, swim? Like, we ain't no pools where I grew up in. Damn, uh, good swim. Oh, no, I swim. So you talking about me being on a ship for six months? You yeah. out your mind. Yeah. You crazy. <laughs> so then I go to the Marine Corps. I, go, I walk into the Marine Corps office. The funniest stuff ever, but most terrifying. Is that person huh? Nothing, I'm listening. I'm listening. So I walk in and all of them got it's all black men in there, but all of them got bald heads, no facial hair, and it is intense. They're like, Yeah, welcome to the Marine Corps. We can get you blah, blah, blah. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, this is this is too much, y'all. Like, ooh. <laughs> Air Force was like, welcome in, you know, you want a bottle of water. The Navy was kind of like, hey, how you doing? Y'all are just woo. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the army. The army got me. Go in the army. They're nice. They're like, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, let's sit down and look at some. And I was like, where do you want to be? And I was like, you know, I want to be an engineer. I was like, I've always been good with my hands. I've always been able to analyze stuff and look at it and put it together and all that stuff. And they were like, you know what? We can do that for you. We can make you an engineer. Now, I'm proud. I'm like, I'm about to go be an engineer, yeah. United yeah. States yeah. Army. I'm I'm excited, man. I got I went through the whole process, got my scores, everything, da da da, and go to basic training. They made me into a combat engineer. Combat engineer is equivalent to infantry. I knew it. Oh man, first in, first in. Okay, <laughs> because our job was to when you're on a battlefield, the 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 opposition force. I don't use the word enemy no more. The opposition force. They set these traps in, right? These barriers. Somebody has to breach those barriers for the infantry, for the tankers, for the artillery to get through to be able to advance. That was you. Man. That was me. Demolition. We had to carry Bangalore, C4, demolition, all this stuff. 
breach the gap and next let everybody in. So we were the first ones there. Every family engine. I was like logistics. We make it happen. I'm like, what? Damn, this is not what I signed up for. I wanted to I wanted to put some stuff together. Not (laughs) me. <laughs> Looking at blueprints, you know. Yeah. Oh man, they got me. So uh came in, this was two thousand, whatever. Um, I'm in um Fort Hood, Texas. Um, engineer, you know, we do train. It was cool. I I I really enjoyed it because it was kind of something I needed from a masculine energy perspective, mm. right? Because I really didn't have positive males around okay. me growing up. So it was really good to have my my staff sergeant, my you know, they were older than I was. I was a kid at 18 and they were just, you know, hey. And I was like, okay, all right. So that I needed that fulfillment to be able to mm-hmm. get myself balanced because I already came from a traumatic environment, meaning that the translation or the transition is you come from this traumatic environment, you're going to end up doing what? Being abusive, being on the streets. Like, there's a lot that Dead happens in jail, right? coming from that because you you come from that and it's like, what do I do as an adult? And so coming to that, I was able to kind of, like the military raised me coming up, if that makes sense. And so we all know in 2001 what happened, 9-11. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the motor pool. We maintenance in our vehicles and stuff like that. Back then, we didn't have smartphones and all that stuff, right? We used to listen to the radio. Boom, radio's on. They talking about the September 11 attacks, this and this. And next thing you know, we leave. And then they're like, hey, everybody needs to come back to the motor pool. And y'all need to make sure y'all bring all y'all gear. I'm a kid. I'm like, okay, all right. Roger that. Mm -hmm. We come down there, bring all our gear. And they're like, yep, we're going to start issuing weapons. We're going to start issuing out your entropine injectors. This is this is for chemical attacks. You got to take those. And we will always train with the training aids, but we never had the real ones. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, Roger that. You know, you're not just getting thinking, real, right? And they're like, okay, cool. You got y'all got two hours to spend time with your families and da da da. da. And we're like, oh, okay, all right. At that time, I I had just had I was I was having. Um, my daughter was, no, no, no. She was, I think she, my, my, she was pregnant at the time with my daughter, and then next thing you know, the buses pull up, and I'm like, okay, all right, it's getting real. Okay, some, some ain't right, and I, all right, kiss your loved ones goodbye, and da da da. Get on the buses. We take the bus to the airfield. There's these massive C5. C5 is like the massive military transport aircraft out there, right? Mm-hmm. So me and another guy, his name was Demetrius Bolden, he's like, man, he's from Baltimore. Man, I don't know what's going on around this thing, man, but, man, they got me effed up, man. <laughs> and I'm up here like, because they, they can't tell you where you're going, right? So we get on the plane. You just man, going. That thing take off. I fall asleep in my seat. You got on all your gear and stuff. Man, we waking up. We like, we still in the air. Why they can't tell you where you're going? You can't just, because it's it's like uh, uh, OPSEC, yeah. operational security. Got you. Right? If someone know where you're going, they can probably try to shoot down the aircraft, you know, try to deter you from getting to your advancement. Yeah, okay. And so you let you tell one person what ends up happening. Everybody's Everybody going right? to start talking about it. It's 500 of us. Yeah. You know, getting yeah. shipped he out. Told whatever. his girl, his yeah. girl's dad is his. Yeah. Uncle's now it's on MySpace because you know I think MySpace was popping at the time. Uh, you see what I'm I saying? Ran. Yeah. I already know you can. Yeah. Mm, so now okay. we land in Uzbekistan. They're like, "Yep, we land in Uzbekistan." I'm like, "Where?" Saj, 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 Saj. What's 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 Uzbekistan? Saj, come on now. Yeah, we're in Uzbekistan. I'm like. Where is Uzbekistan? It's in Asia. Asia. <laughs> I know what my people from yeah. Asia, but we're in Asia, man. It was crazy. It was we was in Uzbekistan at an air base, and next thing you know, got there, got all situated up. We got our ops brief. Seventy two hours later, I'm in Afghanistan. Mm. And if you ever think about going to Afghanistan, just go into your closet, turn the lights out. And just sit in there for like 30 minutes in the dark. That was Afghanistan for me. It was dark as hell in Afghanistan. And sometimes they'll be shooting at us and we wouldn't even shoot back because we don't even know where it's coming from. Damn. That's how dark it was sometimes. They're like, contact right. Okay. 
I don't see nothing over there. Yeah. Contact, you know, it's just, man, it, it was an experience. So now I went from that trauma, that 18 you years. Like, you talk about this like you were in a game and like you were never going to get hit. It, that's how it is. Because if you've never been in a firefight before, like Hollywood has like got people all messed up. Yeah. Right. Hollywood got you thinking that people be shooting with the left, shooting with the right while you in the car <laughs> yeah. moving and you accurately hitting people right in the center mass. Man, it ain't like that in real life. I'm talking about you and firefights and you just like, yeah, let me just keep my head down. Because mm. you just don't know. Yeah, you right? don't know where it's coming and from. And now you may be in a firefight and it could be your people over here. You don't know where they're at. They shooting at you. You shooting at them. We call that fratricide. Because mm. now... You can't see in that. It, it was it was wow. it was it was chaotic over there. But now I went from this traumatized growing up to now I'm in the military, thinking I'm about to be, you know, get built up as a man, best I be. Nine eleven happened. Now I'm in combat. Yeah. But it didn't bother me. Wow. Why do you don't think it didn't bother? Because that shit was normal. Exactly. You already <laughs> it didn't bother yeah. me. Yeah. It was I, already... I, I grew up listening to gunshots. Mm-hmm. I grew up seeing people die. I remember. One time we came across uh, uh, a piece and they were like, they had got hit with artillery and it was like bodies everywhere. And people around me were just like, throwing up. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, so what y'all want us to do? Mm-hmm. And they looking at me like, bruh, like, this don't bother you? I'm like, man, I grew up seeing stuff like this. So like, wow. hey, let's check their pockets. Let's make sure. And so after a while, they started looking at me and they, they gave me this nickname called All American. Because I was so like, that makes sense. I was yeah. so rigid and like. He was like locked in yeah, almost. This is, this is normal. Yeah. You know, I'm okay. I'm a six one. I think at that time I was like 210 pounds, 215 pounds, big kid. I'm like, this is normal. So let's, yep. So went to Afghanistan, came back. And then next thing you know, 2003 came around. George Bush and Saddam Hussein had their thing going on. And now we in Iraq. Damn. You were I'm, in the middle of it. All. Yeah, you was yep. like, yeah, in the middle but of it was, all of it. It was normal. So I'm like, cool, go to Iraq, whatever. The thing that I didn't like is that I had a daughter then. Mm. Right? So now I got a daughter, and I'm like, I got a daughter. That's I'm a father now. You know, like, I got a, I, my father wasn't there. My mother didn't like me. I got a reverse engineer, and I got to, like, so can y'all send me home? Because I got a kid. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. no. So now we're in, Afghan- we in Iraq now. 2003 to 2000, no, 2003 to the end of 2003. Then I came back 2004 to 2005. Then I came back 2006, 2007. And then my last one was 2009 and 2010. Wow. So there was a two a two year gap that you was home. One year. You get one, a one year gap. Yeah. So they started it. So when I went there in 2003, we came back September 2003. They didn't have. They used to have a thing to where I forgot the name of a call, but they would give you time off basically. Mm-hmm. Like you get a year off and then you go back on because we were heavy in Iraq. We were yeah. hundred thousand plus people, you know, troops from all different nations in Iraq. And so you get one year on, one year off, whatever. And then I forgot what they what they called it. And then that last deployment, I was just like, man, this is dumb. Like now I don't even need a map anymore. Oh, we need to go so and so. Yep, I know the route. We can take this route. Yep, and we get there. Mm. Oh, we don't want to go that way because it's like a second home. And that's why he's always tell people. Say, I say I messed up because I should have bought some real estate over there. <laughs> I now you're talking about land. Yeah, I'm like I, I should have bought a should have secretly bought a hotel or something yeah, like that and just yeah. held on to. I don't know because you know, you're not thinking that way when you no you yeah say whatever. But I'm like yeah, like I I can go there right oh, now. Held some connections. You know, I got friends. some over there, but you know it's just you, you know. You know, sometimes you, you got to still wait a little bit until they get their process and yeah. stuff. Yeah, because Cause you're still, what, 18 to now 25, 26? I'm 26 at the time, yeah. 26, 27. And then so coming back, um, you know, that last deployment, I was like, yeah, this is probably it. So I went over to the special op, op side because mm-hmm. now I'm thinking, like, okay, in the game of life, you probably need to get a college degree. Probably need to start positioning yourselves because now you're, 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 I think I was nine years in at that time. You know, you need to probably start looking at like an exit plan. Yeah. You know, and, and that's just how my brain was mm-hmm. to be like, I probably got to like set myself up for, for success. Mm-hmm. But somebody hit me with something and it made me very emotional at the time. And I had all these awards, right? I had airborne, aerosol, 
sapper tabs. When I walked, I walked like, proud. you know, proud, but it was a cocky proud too. Like, like, yeah, you better get out of my way when I'm walking because mm-hmm. I had got all this stuff. Right? Mm-hmm. And so people look at me and they'll look at you like, that's a bad Mama Jam that? right there. Mm-hmm. So this one guy, I was actually walking past the building and the building was the education center on base. Fort, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They call it Fort, Fort uh, Liberty now. They changed the name. So I had to walk to this building, but this building was the education center. So in order to get to this building, I had to walk past. I, used to, I didn't know about, I didn't care about no education center at the time. I was already like, I didn't built myself up as this man. I'm good. Right, yeah. I'm all that. <laughs> and so this guy was walking and he was a, a black guy. I call him my mentor now. I'll talk to him from time to time. He worked at the education center. Black guy, he's walking. And he said, what's going on, high speed? I was like, how you doing, sir? He's like, hmm. I see you, man. You got a lot of stuff on you, man. That's what I'm talking about, man. You a whole, whole soldier, huh? I said, you can say something like that. And he was like, cool. What's your college, what's your college level education? I said, what you mean? He was like, what's your college level education? Like, you got a college degree? And I was like, no. I said, no. I've never been to college before. He was like, oh, so you one of them. And I was like, excuse me, one of them? What do you mean? Oh, you a highly trained high school graduate. I said, I guess you could say so. He was like, all right, well, have a good day. And I walked, and he kept walking. I looked back. And I was like, oh. So then I went to this building, whatever, had to draw some paperwork off, got in my car, and I sat there. And I actually started crying mm-hmm. because he was right. Mm-hmm. I'm about to be almost 30 years old, and I got all this stuff that the military has brought me up to be. But I'm like, if I got out the military today, what can I do? Work at a warehouse? Like, what can I do? Mm. And I was like, damn, I'm really a highly trained high school graduate. And so I got out of my car, and I went back to that education center, and I said, hey, I don't know anything about college. Um, I, you know, I got a high school, degree, high school diploma, whatever, and I want to start something. They were like, yep, we're enrolling in college. It was free to me as a military. Wow. Wow. So yeah, it was like to not take advantage of that. And that's why it's free, because most people in the military don't take advantage of it. It's crazy. You see, yeah. if, if everybody did, then they gonna change they gonna the start rules. Charging, up. Right? Uh, okay, we we spend too much money on this education stuff. So let's. So I was like, they cool. Trained, though, yep. Mm-hmm. So I I went to I went to school at night. Right. I had some of my military experience trans, transition over, so I didn't have to do the whole 180 you know college credits, whatever. So I only had to do like 120 for mm-hmm. undergrad. I only had to do like maybe 65, 70. Mm. So I had to take certain class, whatever, and I every night, boom, 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 knocked it out. Next thing you know, 18 months later, undergraduate, undergraduate degree. But my tone and how I talk was different because when I was in the military, I talked. I didn't talk like how I talk today. I talked like I was still Flint, Michigan talk. Mm. You see, mm-hmm. every other word was a cuss word. Yeah, still using the N word. You know that type of because. Mm-hmm. Even though I was a great soldier, I still didn't know how to communicate like that. I know how to communicate. You know how to take orders and it. give orders give if you needed to. But I didn't know how to have a sophisticated uh, conversation. Got you. So now I'm like, I got this degree now. Man, you got to walk a little. You got to be a little bit different. So now I started reading the dictionary and stuff like that. I'm, I'm like, okay, learn these words. I'm, I'm doing it. So then I'm like, okay, okay I got this undergraduate degree. Why stop? Oh, so you went, so now you... So you started now, getting addicted to education. So now I'm like, why well, stop? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead. And that was like 2010. Uh, 2010, 2011, I got undergraduate degree. So now I'm like, cool, let me go ahead and get this, this master's degree. I started off with one master's program. It was procurement. And one of the, the ladies was like, why don't you just do the MBA? It's only like three extra classes. You, you, it's, it matches exactly. up with what you're doing. Just, it's, you know, the military is going to pay for it. So just go ahead and knock out these extra jobs. All right, cool. I didn't know what the hell an MBA is, you know? So I knocked that out. So I think I did that in 12 months because I ended up doing way more classes at night that, you know, people can take their own classes and do like a two-year track. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me knock this thing out in a year, right? I'll just go to night school, whatever, for a couple hours, you know, do this. And then 12 months later, I'm walking across the stage and I'm like, but little did I know I was the first one in my family, Mm. right, with an MBA degree. Yeah. Okay, so now I got this degree and now the military is kind of like, I'm getting on my nerves a little bit. I'm over the 10 year mark. And I remember I'm on the special operations side, not special forces, but the special operations side, civil affairs. 
And I ended up going to a new unit. And when I got there, nobody talked to me. Mm. What do you mean? Like, like they would look at you and not talk to you? Or? Because I, was, I had so much decorations and awards. Oh. And everybody knew who I was. And then I had got this, this, this award called the JFK Leadership Award. Okay. Right, which is I didn't even know it was big. I didn't know I was going to get it. Like some like my unit, the one kind, my old you unit put me in. Were. I had no yeah. idea. I had no identity. Yeah. Understood. I had no identity. I just know that I just wanted to be the best person I wanted to be. I had no identity. You know, some people like know who they are. I didn't mm-hmm. know who the hell I was. Mm-hmm. And so they give me this award, and I'm like, okay, cool, all right. I never really had family at an award ceremony, so I didn't know how to honor these things. I'm like, cool, thank you so much. Yeah, just another award, whatever. So now I get to this new unit, and I get there, and nobody talks to me. I'm like, what's fuck? This is weird. It's weird. Yeah. Hey, you know, some people did, but I'm saying, like, the people I'm supposed to work <coughs> closely to. And so I went into, like, like a, we would call it a team room. I went in there, and, like, I'm standing there. People looking up, but ain't nobody saying, hey, man, welcome, blah, blah, blah. Man, 15 minutes. Nobody spoke to me. Nobody said a word. Hey, how you doing? Welcome, blah, 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 blah. They were fearful. I found this out later that I, that I was going to take their spots. They were fearful that now Big Dog has walked in. Everybody knows I got an MBA now. Everybody knows he got. he's went to Sapper School because you don't know what that is, but Sapper School is one of the hardest military schools to go to. Oh, wow. Like only if 40 people go, four people graduate. Damn. Right. Like, no joke. It's a hard... I didn't know the school was that hard because when I went, it was fun to me. Now, what's so, what's so hard about it? Like, what, what is it? Is it certain oh, skills own, that you're learning? It's own and popping from day one. So, you know, some people go to special forces. They go, I mean, yeah, special forces, ranger school, whatever. These are hard. Sapper school is there. So you got special forces, ranger, and then you got um, sapper. There are only three skill training schools that you go to, right? Mm. To get that, you get that tab, that is a true badge of honor for the rest of your life, that Mm. you did that. And so you go there, like day zero is you go there and it's it's like no sleep for 30 days. It's like sleep, no sleep. Like we jumped, I jumped from a helicopter into it, into the school, whatever. (laughs) And where you have to jump in, it's like, it is such a small drop zone that you got to be skilled to do it. Otherwise, you're going to end up on a road. You're going to hit a water tower. You're going to be in the trees. You're going to. Hey. If you do that, you flunk out. Well, well, that you was get hurt. hurt. If you get no, uh, you don't. You don't. You'll flunk out. You still got to recover your stuff, whatever. But most people get injured. No. Me, because of how my brain is like an engineer, I get out the plane. I get out the the helicopter, and I'm looking. I'm I'm scaling. I'm. Yeah. I only got like 16 seconds yeah, before yeah. I'm there. And so I come out, I got my, my parachute open, I'm good, and I'm like, water tower, road, There's a, there was, a, there was a, a military police driving course. So it was like all these things and trees. And I'm like, and I can see people all, because when you come out, you're just like panicking a little bit. And I'm up here like, I, I don't need to panic. I'm up here like, That's right. I'm up here like, yeah. But I had done my, my research too to know okay. where to go. And I'm like. So I go to the skirt of the trees, my parachute perfectly hits a tree, gets on the branch, and now I get to get out of my thing, go down, hop on the ground, I'm like, ah. so get all my stuff. We had to go to a, a, a meeting point, right? We get to the meeting point, I'm the only one there. I'm like, okay, cool, everybody else gonna come up. 30 minutes go by, I'm the only one there. Hour go by, the first person come, they're limping. They got their stuff and they're just like, oh, Damn. I think I hurt my ankle. Damn. I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, all right. More people come in. They're like, man, I hit the water tower. I think my, my I think I fractured my elbow. Like, it was crazy. It's like four, it's, it's no, it's, it's how many people jumped? It was 15 of us that were airborne qualified to jump. Everybody else, they got lucky because they end up like getting dropped off, whatever. And so I'm up here like, they're like, man, you didn't hit the, the road, like, you look like nothing happened. I was like, yeah, man, I landed pretty hard, man. Like, shoot, man, I hit that ground. It was hard. Mm-hmm. I ain't mm-hmm. no dummy. I need to preserve my leg. So now you go into that. So now you got to go into all your training. There's there's a land nav course. I can't ex- I can't give a lot of details about that because I'll take away the value of the, of the um, training. I want mm-hmm. people to express themselves. Um, that's in the military. But now you got a land nav course. This land nav course is hard. 
it is hard. It is like from this point to that point is a mile or two. Then from this point is about five miles. It's hard. So you got all these check things that you got to be able to do, but you get points when you when you get through those check check marks. Right. Here's the thing about it. You don't even know where you're scoring at. Until the end. Until the end. Wow. You don't even know if you graduate. So the whole time you're just thinking, you I just got to You don't even know if good. you graduate oh. until the last final day. And how long is it? 30 days. Oh, wow. Like 28, 28 yeah. days. I, I, and that was back in 2000. When I go 2007, I went. So I don't know how, where is it at now. No, no, no. That was 2009 I went. And so. So was um, this the April 2nd event? Or we, we, we still haven't even gotten to April 2nd. When you said that your mind had shifted. Oh, we ain't gotten there yet. Damn, okay. All right. So like, go, I go, you know, go into that training or whatever. Uh, last day, body is like, I'm tired. Like, cause you, you, like I said, you're going. And we had to do like a ruck march where you got to have 35 pounds on your back, whatever. But it's a 12 mile ruck march, but the terrain is like this, right? The, at that time, the fastest person to get through it was two hours and five minutes to get through this course. I got through it at one hour, 56 minutes and 12 seconds. I jogged the whole entire time. Some fast jogs. I just jogged. <laughs> I never quit. I just kept going. And so when I got there, I passed out because I, I, my brain was just finish line, right? It was like a, I didn't think about anything else. Nobody, I was passing people. I didn't care. So I get there, passed out, didn't know where my time was at, whatever they like. And so I remember them looking at me, and I'm like, like they're they're giving me an IV and I'm like coming back and they say you good you all right they do this you know the salt thing or whatever and I'm like and they was like what is wrong with you and I was like what what are you talking about I was like you're not human <laughs> I was like it was a guy a funny white guy he's like you're not human I said what are you talking about he said you came in at one hour and fifty six minutes like you just beat the whole course record uh, what now this is a white man's game the military. All this training stuff like that, and no disrespect to them, but they dominated it, whatever, right? Yeah. So we get through all these checkpoints, whatever, all these things, whatever. Last day, I'm like, oh, man, I, I'm just ready to go home. And they're like, yep. So the people who graduate, um, they call you last. It's like a torture thing. I think they try to torture you, right? So everybody who don't graduate, you still go through, and you get a participation, like certification. No, oh, wow. But it's black and white. I wouldn't have expected that from them with like a participation award. You get a participation, like like uh, black and white a document. Basically, yeah. like, yeah, thank you so much. If you get that, that means you didn't pass. Mm. You participated, but you didn't oh, pass. My God. That is so messed That is that, torturing. That is messed up. So now it, they're going through it. So you you sitting there like, and yeah, me. You couldn't even take a test before. And you just did all that. Listen. And then we're here. Let's let's get to this great. Hold on, hold on. Like, I'm about man. to finish it up. So now we're going through this, and I'm up here like you in a, you know you sitting in the audience because they call your name up, and you just like, okay, hold on, I pass. Man, they called. I was like the second to last person that they called. You know, last name is Way, whatever. And I was like, oh. so now you got the four people because I'm gonna tell you about four forty people participate. Only three people got through, 30 people got through the end because 10 people either died. I mean, not died. I'm sorry. Got injured. They got injured. I was say, God damn. Or, or they quit. They yeah. got injured or they quit. And so now, you know, we, we, we're there. Now it's us four, like, but you get a caller one that says, congratulations, you know, that you, you get it. And it's, it sits in my office. It's black. I mean, not black, white. It's in color. And you get that thing to say, hey, you. But then they were like, at the, you know, we, we're weak, so we're going through all this 20, 28 days, and I'm weak as hell. I'm just like up here, like, and I'm like, congratulations, good job. And it's the, 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 the post general is the one who's uh, passing out this thing. And, but the people who participated, they got to go sit back down and they got to be in the audience and watch you. Boy, you should have saw those mad faces in that thing. Oh my God. Mm. Because it's a badge of honor to get that tap. Mm -hmm. And so they pulled me to the side and was like, well, we just want to say that. Um, uh, Mr. Wade scored the highest. So I was number one out of my class for that. And I'm like, ain't no way. Come mm -hmm. on now. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way. But everybody else were officers. I'm enlisted, which is a big separation in the military. And they were like, yeah, you're the second enlisted person to come in at number one. 
And I'm like, okay, something is like, I keep getting all this stuff. I'm doing a great job, whatever. And so I get home, um, get home. You know, my kids are getting old. I got three kids at a time, my daughter, my two sons. And something just hit me like that following year, that April to where I was like, yeah, I think it's time to go do something different. Because, you, you know, you, um, your kids are getting older and you're yeah. just looking at them like, something's not right. So then I started listening to Les Brown, motivational speakers, and saw this stuff on YouTube. Thank God to YouTube. And I was like, I think I must try something else. So I try to go do other jobs in the military. These haters wouldn't allow for me to do it. And so I was like, how can I get out, still keep, you know, when I'm getting paid, but also get out early? So somebody was like, you know you can medically retire. I was like, mm -hmm. now I didn't even tell y'all that previously in one of my deployments, I had got injured mm. in the military. I had got wounded. We had got ambushed and I ended up getting wounded to where it got so bad to where I was out for nine months because my the bullet had hit my sciatica nerve, which caused mm. me to be temporarily paralyzed from the waist down. Oh wow! So I had to learn how to walk again. And I don't want to get into that, you know, yeah. in depth into that. And so I was like, well, I do got this back pain. So I started going through all my appointments, started going this, and next thing you know, they got mad because I was like, I don't want to jump out of planes no more. So I terminated my jump status, which you can do. And as soon as I terminated my jump status, all of them turned their back on me. Mm. Now, I'm at 11, 12 years in the yeah. military. I didn't deploy five times. I got all this stuff, and now you're going to turn your back on me? I see how y'all move. Yeah, that's man. so. I played the game uh, for those last two years in the military. I told my son major, "You can go kick rocks," and I just started. I, I, I spent my time at the education center because they always had trainings going on, like mm -hmm. project management and all this other stuff. And then I finally got out the military, September fourth, two thousand fourteen. Peace, hundred percent disabled military veteran, or whatever. And so. At that moment, you know, that April 2nd was the day that I was just like, yeah, we got to we got to do something different. Then from there, I um, started working a few jobs. I worked at a warehouse for two weeks, was like, no, nah, I'm going to kill somebody in here. Um, <laughs> then I got a job at FEMA. And that's where truly my government contracting journey. Yeah. Would be, OK. FEMA. Uh, that's the same people that help with like the hurricane support and everything like that, right? That's right. So, yeah. So when you say that that's where it started, was it just kind of being in there and then just kind of like making yourself aware of the way things was going, the operations, how they was handling? It? So that so driving from the trees. Yeah, right. So so there's two. <laughs> so there's two things that happen, right? So when I was in the military. We all so civilian support is what kind of moves the logistical ball, right? Mm -hmm. So in order for me to do my job in the military, I need vehicles, I need weapons. That stuff comes from the commercial side, right? The uniforms, your socks, all that stuff came right. from there. Right. And we would our supply person would make these purchases, would do these purchase orders from these vendors. That was my first exposure, wasn't paying attention. But I was paying attention, but I, it didn't dawn on me. We're in Iraq. I think this was like my last deployment. We're in Iraq. And one of the guys used to come to my combat housing unit where we stayed at on base. And they would, um, he would pick up our trash. So we had trash in our room. We'll put it outside, whatever. And they would come pick it up. One day, I had, because I'm a friendly person like that, I'll talk to him. And one day he was like, hey, man, what's going on? I was like, hey, man, what's going on? Thank you so much once again, man. You know, having a conversation. And I said, how much do you make? You, I, don't, I ain't trying to disrespect. How much do you make doing question. this right here, right? He was like, well, I work for this company called Mantech, and we make, he was like, man, I make about $85,000 a year, whatever, just coming over here doing this, but I make an additional $60,000 because we're in a hazard. We're in a hazard zone. It's called hazard duty pay. They got all these incentives. And I was like, what? I said, I don't even make that. And I'm the one got to go out the wire every day and get shot at and blown up and all these different things. And you trying to tell me that, up wait a minute, something ain't right. You know, like, 
And <laughs> you, know, like, you, you, you probably over here stacking, 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 stacking because mm-hmm. you getting food over here. You ain't got to go to the club. You ain't got to spend no money. You ain't like, and I, it just hit me, but I didn't, it didn't, it hit me, but it didn't transition over. Yeah. So then, um, when I started working at FEMA, I was working in a program, or well, it's called a director. It's called a, uh, grants program directorate, right? Uh, grants pro GPD. And in there, I was in charge of research and development and another different portfolio of grants. But we had some contracts that we would push out to vendors from time to time, whatever. Mm. And so my job was to evaluate, make sure that they met the requirements. I would sign it, and then we'll start issuing out the grant funds, right? Mm-hmm. But you just don't get, you get on, a grant is not where, most grants are not like, if it's a $2 million grant, you get a $2 million check. Right, it works over over time. Yeah, because gotcha. now you got to send reports in and say, "Hey, here we." So you, know, you can keep a, getting the money. Exactly. Okay. Right. All right. Measurements of effectiveness. Measurements of performance. So one day I'm just doing my job. I'm working at FEMA, I'm making like 85k a year, 80k a year. You know, that's why I'll tell the story about man. I used to make 80k a year, and now I'm like, cool, you know. And one came across my desk, and it was um, a 2.6 million dollar grant for two years to install smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors in a low-income family homes in West Virginia. <laughs> Look at me. I've been... <laughs> now, I had issued out grants before, but they were like 100K here, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. But this, I'm like... 2.6 million. I'm reading, because we used to always have to read... The, I, I would read the scope of work. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up. Right. I just replaced... My smoke smoke detector battery like two days ago, and I know how to you know. I know how to do this. I'm I'm telling you, I was like just, and I was like, wow. So I went to my manager, and I was like, hey, like you know, I got a two point seven million dollar grant. She was like, yeah, yeah. I said, well, just you know, question. Mm-hmm. I said, how do we know that they're actually doing this work? Like, how do we know we give them this money that they're actually doing it? Mm-hmm. Well, they got to send in weekly and monthly reports, and we just got to take their... I said, no, no. She said, she said, well, they got to do weekly and monthly reports. I said, but do we send somebody out there mm-hmm. to just do... Well, like quality you know, control. Yeah, she said, well, we don't really do it, but sometimes we may do it from time to time. We really don't have the, the travel mm-hmm. budget mm-hmm. to do that. And I said, so we're going to get them $2.6 million, I mean, $2.6 million and like, yeah, you know, that's how we... Telling you, Fox. It, 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 it oh, we're listening. It messed me up. So I went back to my desk, and I'm just like, I was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Typed up my resignation letter. Wow. Right there. He had already studied. He gets what's because side of because him. my it it was an emotional. Don't get me wrong. It was an emotional thing to do. Yeah, I was about to say why but, not stay and kind of. But get it the was kind of like a. It was kind of like God was already telling mm-hmm. me to do this anyway mm-hmm. for, and I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. He was cultivating you. You said it, I wasn't paying attention, but that right there, because that was the first one ever to where I'm looking at, like, this is $2.7 million, you know, grant, whatever. Like, I'm like, but now I'm listening. I'm like, so I went, I did my resignation, told him, you know, gave him, I actually gave him a three week notice because I was like, hey, I know y'all got to find a replacement, all this other stuff. And plus, I wanted to keep a relationship with them. So okay. Like just to understand a little. So you say, hey, these government contracts. You say, hey, this is this grant. Would you say they're the same thing or they're different? They're the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to explain that a little bit. Yeah. So now I'm like, cool. Because I, I did some con- I, I did I did issue out some con- contracts, right? So we had to do like, uh, so each year there is a grant period, right? To where you submit your grants. You, su- you submit your proposal for grants. But then we had to evaluate the ones that we wanted to approve for right. that for that uh, program year is what we call it. And so we had to bring in a company because you know you gotta you gotta print all this paperwork. You gotta bring in evaluate. We didn't have all that manpower, so we would contract that out to a company. And we contracted out to a company, and we would go to a place. We were in Baltimore, Maryland, at a Marriott. We would go there. We would rent out the conference room. And everybody will go through the grant. You had a scoring criteria that you use because it's all, you know, dress right, dress. And so you um, have this this criteria, or whatever, and, you know, everybody did it. And so we contracted out this company to do it, and we paid them like 150 grand for three days mm. 
to come. They would print, they would do all this stuff. And I noticed that my manager and that contractor were cool because mm -hmm. after that, you know, they drinking. And wow, yeah, that's so. That's why they got that 150 people sitting on each other's laps. And I'm sitting out there looking. I'm observing. I'm paying attention yeah. to all this stuff going on. I'm like, oh, I see how we move. Yeah. Because I got the con. I put because we all had mm -hmm. to like look at the contract. I'm like, we are gonna pay them what for three days? What? Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I'm I'm paying attention. So I resigned. Went back. I was married at the time. I told my wife. She said a whole bunch of crazy stuff because you she was so that. used to mm -hmm. the security of a job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, listen, roll with me. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to be easy, but we're going to be good. And she just couldn't Submit. get it, right? And so after <laughs> Don't do it. After the end of that month, I, I once again, God tells you things. I was like, yeah, this ain't going to work between you and I. I ain't had no money. I had $36 in my bank account at the time, you know. Yeah, I had my military retirement coming in, but it wasn't covering. You know, I had six kids in the house at that time. Mm -hmm. I had my three, the twins had came. No, I had my five biological, and I had her son, which I don't want to use the word stepson, but he was my son at the time. I got six kids, and I got a wife, and she was going through getting her PhD at the time. And I'm like, listen, it's gonna be, but we gonna get there. Trust me. Just, just, she just couldn't do it, and I was just like, yeah, I gotta let you go. It's going to be hard, too, because now we about to have split households, mm -hmm. and, you know, so end up, we started the divorce process, whatever, and then next thing you know, I'm looking at my account, I'm like, man, we got $36. $36. Right? Like, that's it. I'm like, no savings. I'm just like, so I end up, you know, when you get desperate, what you end up doing? Two things you can do. When you get desperate, you end up going to go take from somebody else, okay, mm -hmm. or you figure out how you can connect with other people that can kind of give you like. So I called this one guy, great guy, Mr. Charles of the, he's the president of the Black Emergency Management Association. Great guy, man, still talk to him today. And I was like, hey, Charles, um, you know, um, I know you're well connected and you know, I'm just, I got my company going. You know, we're just trying to get some, I'm just trying to get some work. Ain't gotta be nothing big, but just trying to get some work. He's like, matter of fact, hey, I'm about to go down to Ben's Chili Bowl in DC whatever, because I was living in D.C. at the time. Hey, come down there. I got some people that's going to be there, whatever. Maybe, you know, we can see, you know, maybe I can get you to do some stuff for the association, whatever, because you're a great guy. Bet. I ain't got no money. How the hell am I going to get down to Ben's Tilly Bowl and that's going to be gas. You're reliable. People know that and I'm like, I got $36. And I'm like, ah, but God going to make a way. So then I'm like, wait a minute. Hold up. I ain't got to drive. I can take the train down there. Nice. Because FEMA will give us Metro cards and they will load money to it monthly. Well, FEMA, because when I left them, them, FEMA was still loading money to my oh, cards because they don't really have it out processed. Yeah, processed yeah. to be like, okay, check the block, give us the card. And so I'm like, I got 200 hours on this card. Boom, I took the train, got down there, I'm sitting down there, I'm not eating. I ain't got no money to buy no food, but I'm... And Charles like, no, man, I got you, man. Like, we food on me. I'm like, all right, bet, cool, all right, cool. But, you know, family's good. There's groceries in the house with the family and stuff like that. You know, you know, when you live in paycheck to paycheck, you end up taking care of all your expenses, and then you got that little you bit got, left You got over. a little bit left. But you're like, ah, okay, food and refrigerator. Yeah, I ain't exactly got to go feel. nowhere. Exactly I'm just going to be at home. Yeah. We can walk to the park. You start, you know, getting creative. <laughs> but. And so one of the guys that was there, he was like, yeah, you know, I started my company 10 years ago, and da 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 And I said, yeah. He was like, so what do you do? I said, I'm in business continuity now. Once again... Got that degree, got the certif got these free certifications, going to educate. None of this came out of my pocket. And I said, he said, oh, you a certified uh, certified business kind of new professional with DR? I said, yeah, I am. He was like, man, I just got this contract, and it actually started yesterday, but I don't have anybody to help me do it. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, sure. He was like, I said, he was like, it's, it's, it's small. It's only $30,000 on it, but, you know, it's something to get going trying to be that strong guy. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, just uh, um, give me your number. We can talk tomorrow, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Deep down inside, I'm going, $30,000 contract. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Call him the next day. He gave me a subcontract agreement. Started two days later because I had to go through some, you know, fingerprinting and stuff like that. Now, I'm an independent contract this time. Boom, started that contract. But now I'm like, but damn, I need money today. It's a net 30 contract. Ooh. I still got to do 30 days, yeah. right? 
So now I'm like, ah. And then once again, when you get desperate, you got two things. You can go take it from somebody else or you can reach out to somebody. So I reached out to somebody and said, man, just go to the bank and get a line of credit. I was like, what the hell is a line of credit? Mm. He said, oh, you got a contract. Just take your contract to the bank and they can probably, you know, use, use that as collateral or something to get you a line of credit. Man, I was like, I ain't, I don't, I'm going to call my bank. So I called my bank and they was like, yeah, man, we, we can get you a $10,000 line of credit. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> also, these, so these, these contracts are also like, Equitable in a, in a sense, like you could take it's them an to asset. the yeah. wow, yeah. I need yeah. no need, need no credit. Like I had like bad credit at times. Yeah. So like they gave me a line of credit, ten k, and I'm like bet. So now I'm working that. Now I got money I can put in my gas tank. I cause yeah. I could have did it from home, but I was like nah. Somebody was like you need to be at customer site that they get to know you. Mm -hmm. so I go there every day. I got a suit on. I'm professional. Boom boom boom. And I'm like like I'm giving this my all, like my everything, making sure they got everything they need. I'm three weeks in, and guy comes to me. He said, "Man, you've been doing such a great job. Come here every day. I want you to introduce you to somebody else in the agency." I go to them. He's like, "Yeah, this is blah blah. He's a military veteran. He he hooked me up." And the guy was like, "Yeah. By the way, I need the same work you're doing for him. Can you come do it in my office too?" And so I was like, you're, "At this point, you're 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 the one that's fulfilling these. I'm, I'm doing the work. Got gotcha. you. So not, but my relationship with the guy who helped me out." I go back to him and say, hey, man, I talked to so-and-so, and they said they got more work there, too. And he said, okay, bet, let me talk to him. So he got the contract again, which was, I learned a lot from that process. He got the co another contract, but this one was 90000 mm. So now I'm, I'm three weeks in. I got a 30K contract, and a 90K, so I'm 120. I ain't never made 120K a year. year. Okay. So <laughs> now I'm like, oh. I'm, you know, so now I'm like, cool. So now I get the, I'm working both of these jobs, these contracts, whatever, doing a great job. And now I'm going to events. I'm like, you know, in my head, I'm doing what other business owners would do in my position, just trying to figure it out. And then six months later, guy called me up and said, hey, man, I got this contract I won, but we got to give a percentage to an MBE company. You're an MBE. I heard great things about you, blah, blah, blah. Are you okay with that? I said, yeah, I'm cool. Send me the information, whatever. $1.2 million contract, six Great. months in. Man, shout out to you. And so did you establish the, like, because you said you had the company. Were you, like, establishing this while you was at FEMA? After you left FEMA, did you, like, when you say the company, what is that? Because a lot of people say, oh, I got a company, but they ain't got no LLC. It's just, they just yep. doing work. So, so Google is my best friend. Okay. So I resigned. That night I didn't sleep. You'd be so, hard to sleep, right? You just you just quit your job. Exactly. I went on Google, how to structure your business, whatever. All the sites that said, pay me this to do it, mm -mm. got to be something better. Hey, state of Maryland says, this is what you got to do. Oh, that's it? Bet. I did have a little credit card that had like a $500, what's personal one? Boo, bet. All I need is to register my company. I think it was $75 at a time. Mm -hmm. Register. Okay, you got to get a domain from GoDaddy, $9.99. Right. It was like my I was just figuring all this thing out, mm -hmm. but I was like, I ain't paying nobody five hundred dollars to do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, you saying I can go here directly and bet. So now I built my own website. Website on Wix. I'm like, cool, how do you build a website? I got my website window open right here. I pulled up a company called Lidos, who's a billion, multi billion dollar corporation. Copy and paste. <laughs> I got this on theirs. Yep. I'm gonna put mine. And so I just did that. Now, you know, you and and I could have I could have did a whole bunch of crazy stuff, right? Now I got money in my bank business bank account. I'm stacking. And I could have been out like, yeah, let me go get me a watch. Mm -hmm. That ain't me. I don't have that in me. I'm looking at it like, okay, so now I got this these contracts coming in. How can I get more? I got to go hire people. Yeah. Okay, I got this much this revenue coming in. Let me hire right. people. Let right. me go get an accountant. Okay. Let me go talk to this lawyer. And I will ask questions to a lot of people like that were like multimillionaires. I'm like, hey, man, I just need 30 minutes of your time. Tell me what I shouldn't do. Mm. Yeah, man, let me tell you like this. Don't do this, do this. And I'm like, uh-huh, taking notes. And next thing you know, I would apply what they, what they say to do. I started writing my own proposals because I use that MBA to my advantage. Let me write these own proposals. And next thing you know, boom, I started winning. And then winning, they were small, but compounding. I'm subcontracting with people. And then, boom, we won our first 
I mean, we won a prime contract last year, $30 million contract. Wow. February. That's huge. Congrats. April come, $27 million contract. So now I develop processes and procedures in my company to look at it from a, yeah, you probably could go buy a million dollar house right now. But let's build this thing. Let's build this first. To a hundred million dollar house. And that way I can be places without having to be there and that thing is still doing this. Mm-hmm. And so my brain was just like, don't focus on everybody else and what they're doing. What can we do to get out of this? Wow, and it all started from that that moment of seeing some halfway shady business going <laughs> on, and it was like, I don't want to be a part thing. of this and leaving. There's one thing you said that, that actually allowed you to be valuable to them, and it was an MBE? Minority Business Enterprise. Understood. To that, to Talk that, about to one. that. Elaborate on that. How I, do you obtain that? <sighs> what made you get that? So, once again, when you're desperate, you do two things. You go take it from somebody else, Mm -hmm. or you go seek the information. Mm -hmm. And so I would just be online. Mm. And I'm like, what are some things that I can add to my business, right? And I came across, oh, here's here's the Minority Business Enterprise Program. It's not a certification. It's just a program Mm -hmm. to help small businesses Mm -hmm. grow. So I'm like, what is this thing? So I'm talking to other people who got in, like, yeah, you know, you can use this, da-da-da. Cool. Downloaded the application. Step one, step two, step three, and I just did all that. I got it, not knowing that I was sitting on gold. Mm-hmm. And now I was like, you know, I got this thing, but all the contracts in Maryland, not all of them, but most of them, how they're evaluated, they have a certain percentage that needs to go to a minority business enterprise by mm-hmm. law. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, this contract says I can get 5%. This contract says I can get 20%, mm-hmm. right? I'm not big enough to be able to go after these multi million dollar contracts, but there are other companies that are. How can I talk to them? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Let me download a list of all the companies in the state of Maryland that's in this IT space, and I'm going to reach out to them uh, one-on-one. So I literally, my first go-around, I spent five days, Monday through Friday, and I sent out 1,500 individual emails. Now, the, 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 the body of the paragraph was the same for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know how we automate mm-hmm, things mm-hmm, now mm-hmm. and it get automated? Well, sometimes you can do that, but people can pick up on when it's automated. Correct. Okay? But if I say, good morning, Mrs. So-and-so, how are you doing, Mr. Blah, 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 I would just, I would just, I, I had a, a copy-paste template, but it was just the body. Yeah, but I would just change out the yeah. Mr. and Miss. Now, we did have the tools to be able to yeah. do it. I just wanted it to be more intimate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. And I would add in my bio and my capability statement for my company, which is your like your brochure or whatever. And then I would just tell the story of I'm a military veteran, Purple Heart. I used emotional intelligence to do mm-hmm. it. So out of the 1,500, I would have 700 respond. But in a body of that paragraph, I will always have a call to action to say, hey, I would like to set up a one-on-one conference call, face-to-face, blah, 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 blah. Please let me know if you have availability. So now I got 700, okay? Now out of the 700, 200 gave me their time. Hey, here's a time slot for 15 minutes. I'll get on there, present myself, go to them. Now out of those, I partner with 50. Mm. I got subcontracts from all 50. Wow. So now, out of all 50, if this subcontract, this subcontract is a quarter million, this subcontract is 100K, this subcontract is a million, you see how I'm compounding? Yeah, all of, it's like numbers game, <laughs> all numbers. Where did you even, like, how did you even go about getting the 1,500 context to begin with? He just, I teach me. Oh. Uh, then he sat there and called them. I'm sorry, I just listened very well. I like that. Um, yeah, you listen very well, too. You're, you're really you're analytical. So yeah. like the test taken. Yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah, because because especially because each state has a each state has a thing called like a contract vehicle. Yeah. Right? So there's certain contracts to where the government has gotten smart because they know that it's kind of like when you, it's like when I when we when we are looking to hire people in a company, mm-hmm. like we have specific criteria in the job solicitation that's posted on Indeed, LinkedIn, all these different places, and so out of 200 candidates, I'm always going to have a hundred of them. That's not going to be qualified, but they're going to shoot their shot anyway. That makes sense. They're going to shoot their shot, but now you're wasting my time. Yeah. So the government's like, no, we're going to go through a selection process for you to be able to compete on these particular contracts. So once you go through that process and you're selected, now that's public information. 
They have to. So now their 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 public their information on that contract has to be published on that government website. And their information has their contract number, their address, the business name, and the key thing to it all, the point of contact. And a point Mm -hmm. of contact has to have their first, last name, email address, and phone number. And that email address has got to be a business address, like a business email? Whatever, whatever one they chose on that contract. So now I downloaded all that information yeah. and now I got it and I'm like, cool. All right, cool. I did five days straight. I was so obsessed. Five days straight, like a normal job, nine to five, because even though um, I had, so I was working on those other contracts, but once those contracts were over, I'm working on this $1.2, $1.6 million contract, whatever. I had somebody working on it. I hired somebody. Mm-hmm. So now they're making 125k a year. I'm only paying myself 60k a year and the other money I was stacking in a business account. Because I'm like I don't need to change my life right now. I could have paid myself 100k a year, but I'm like, yeah, that don't make no sense from a tax perspective. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to get myself some type of paycheck to be able to bring in and just take care of my life. I don't need to buy nothing. I don't need to buy no shoes. I don't need nothing in my life right now. I just need to build this business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm like blown away because it seems like your whole life was preparing you for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like going through the military to get that experience, then getting the job with FEMA, then using your skills and the things you learned from FEMA. And then also like your experience in the military to, you know, be able to pull the heartstrings in to to get those contracts. It's like everything prepared you for it. Um, With that said, if I was like, what will be some like advice you would give someone who may not have that same, you know, path for that same journey, but is looking at, you know, the government contracts as a way to provide opportunity for others. So what I do with my mentees now, and I got a bunch of them who have won contracts in less than 90 days. Some okay. have some have won contracts in a week. Wow. Like I'm like, you sound like me, you know, yeah. like, like overachiever. You stuff <laughs> like, you know, and so my advice to everyone is that you gotta have an autistic mindset. Mm. What I mean by that is that you gotta Write your plan down and say, okay, where am I trying to go? What do I want and what am I trying to go? But also, what problems am I trying to solve in the world? See, everybody always want to say, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. millionaire." You're you're not going to get there. Or if you do become a millionaire, it ain't ain't going to be there for too long. Right. Okay? You got to figure out what does the world need? Mm -hmm. Like somebody created these mics because they were like, people need mics. So now they're selling mics. On a consistent, they, they created a product one time, and now they're selling it across the whole entire world because people need it. What does the world need? Let's do that first, a business plan. Now we got to look at, okay, who can I partner with? Okay, I'm not going to try to do it on my own. Who can I partner with from a, either I'm a the primary contractor or a subcontractor, no matter, but how can I partner with them so we both can get to that at the same time, but I'm not doing it by myself? And plus, what's better than one? Two, mm-hmm. right? So now I get to come into the fold. The other thing about it is that going back to the autistic mindset, your first year in business, when you start making money, that money don't belong to you. Mm-mm. It's not your money. It's not your money. It's the business money. Exactly. It is your it is your start to getting to a place to where you don't have to do it no more. The problem with now is that I see people, like I had somebody the other day said, I'm basically basically to sum it all up. I'm trying to be a millionaire in 30 days. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Yeah, unless you marry somebody. Go go, you're gonna have to go marry a millionaire. And maybe he don't have a she don't have a what they call that that what is it? Prenup? Prenup, yeah. Yep. And there you go. All right. That's the only way, right? So I'm like, you gotta you gotta have that mindset to be like, I am one million percent focused on that. With that, I do wanna you talked about like your mentees and the people that you are coaching in this space, like how Cause we talked on the no phone. No coaches, no coaching. Right, no right. Coaches, yeah. So we talked about how things are changing for you, and you really want to focus on like the youth workforce development and things like mm-hmm. that. So how can people, you know, kind of learn from you and try to figure out how to get into this space so that they can make a difference and impact? Yeah, we need to want to partner with you to do that. So um, this is my last iteration of one-on-one mentorship. I just don't have the capacity anymore to mm-hmm. do it. So what I've done is that I did create a community called the Ultimate GovCon Blueprint Community. The mm-hmm. reason why I call it the Ultimate because the people who come in and they apply everything they learn in there, these mamma jammas are winning government contracts. Now I get it; everybody's different. 
people don't see things how other people see it. So we got this community that we created. It's only $79.99 a month. That's an issue for some people, not an issue for some. But I come in there once a week to do a live mentorship call, once a week to do a Q&A, and once a week to do a, a it's called the um, uh, Morning Money Moves. Right? So that's three because days a week. Three days a week. And then like uh, we have a digital library. Every month I do a virtual live workshop on proposal writing, pricing, you name it, right? Um, and then we have um, tools and templates you can utilize in there to be able, you know, if you need a proposal, like a really good proposal, you can download a proposal. All you got to do is input your information and whatever is coming from that solicitation, yes. everything is in there for you to be successful. So wow. we have the community. Um, and then in 2025, I'm transitioning over. I'm going to be mentoring no more adults, but I'll be mentoring uh, uh, 20 and under because I think that they're a little bit more receptive and a little bit more valuable in learning this skill um, in, in, this, in this space. Um, the other piece to it all is um, in the community as well, um, from time to, in a community, we, we can partner, right? Let's say you're in a community and you're like, hey, I found an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool. Well, I want to partner with Black Fox. Bet we can do that because the more people that can partner on the opportunity, the better. Now, imagine you pay $79.99 a month, right? And then you partner with us, and next thing you know, you walk away with a million-dollar contract. I think that's a damn good ROI, right? Mm -hmm. And so building this community and allowing for it to be like, you know, our church mm -hmm. of the space of government contracting is what we're building. So the digital library is there. Everything is there. Most people come into it. I've, I've actually had a person come in and audit, and they were like, I've never seen anything like this before. Mm. Like, I've never, like, how did you even come up? I'm like, listen, I sit down with my team, and we be like, okay, yep. let's take people through a process. We got three, we got three channels. The person that knows ish, that don't know ish, the person who's been in business for a little while, but they just don't have the operational mindset or, or whatever. And then the person that's like, nope, I've been in business and I know how to do business. So how can we help out those three mm -hmm. levels of people? So we just develop stuff to be like, okay, if I was this person, what would I need? Oh, okay. Let's build this, put it in a community. If I was this person, what would I need? Okay. So it's kind of like your... We, we've created to be like for your beginners and also your advanced people. Mm. Man, that's... And so 2025, you're saying that that's when you start the, you, um, the youth yeah. mentorship. Yeah, but the would, youth. That, would that also mean that the community will kind of like halt? No, no, no. Community oh, community, forever. Community, okay, community Communities still be forever, yeah. Gotcha. The community's forever, so got to make sure the community's forever. And having access to all of that information in the community is so viable. Like, if you do want to be yeah. successful, just mm -hmm. to skip, you know, all that great stuff that he had to do, which is clearly your purpose mm -hmm. building, um, to be able to come here and accelerate now um, and grab the fruit of all your hard work. Yeah. You know, where God wants you to be. So I'm excited about um, being able to refer people to that. I'm serious because it's all about resources. It's all about experts. If you're not an expert or a master at something, you gotta have a mentor. You heard yourself. Mm -hmm. You went into that education center. When you walk by, you had to get past the education center, but it was that guy that sparked you. Mm -hmm. And so for you, clearly you wanna be that for other people. We need it. We need mentors that are experts or that have got a gift in a certain area. So yeah, yeah. excited to be able to refer people to you. Excited to be able to have some of the youth, even that I know, be a part of that youth mentorship. That's a great skill to have. Um, I'm excited for your continuous growth and very, very um, thankful that you came on our show to share it. Yeah, likewise. And you shared it from a real, real long perspective. I'm just saying it. But it was all we, worth we, it. We can yeah. always do a part two. We can always yes, do a let's part do two. do it. I Definitely. Love it. Part two. Because, I mean, and Jazz and I are always talking about ways that we want to, you know, not just make this a podcast, not just make this a show where people give and gain, but we want to be able to give back and we want to create opportunities, you know, for the youth to learn these different things. And we just always come to a certain roadblock, but just the conversations that we had on and off camera right. boxes, like you just kind of spark the ideas and mm -hmm. things that we can, you know, change and, and, and implement and things like that in our process as well. So I'm excited about putting this one out, excited about a part two. 
Uh, but just for now, just tell our listeners where they can find you um, and anything that you're excited about coming up this year. Well, before I do that, I want y'all to understand that the reason why I took the, 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 the beginning perspective is because we got a lot of our people out there right now that's experiencing a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of trauma, yeah. a lot of like, I don't know what to do. And I want them to see that I'm, I'm not special. I am no one special. There is nothing special about me, but I was just like you, just like you. And all it takes is decisions. That's, mm -hmm. it. That's it. It's all it takes is decisions. So if you came from my background or worse or better, you still have the opportunity to make decisions to be able to say, you know what? Damn, he came through all that. I can do it too. Cause mm -hmm. there's nothing special about me. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Fox underscore Wade. You can find me on LinkedIn at Marcellus Fox Wade. You can find me on all social media platforms. Just look for Fox Wade on there. Um, I am very, very friendly. Um, you can reach out. If you DM me or reach out, whatever, and I don't, and I don't respond in five seconds, trust me. I'm going to get to it, just <laughs> not right away, all right? But human. we do got people that do monitor my um, inbox, so we try to, like, say, hey, this person has a question because I'm, I'm, I'm very open and honest when it comes to sharing this information to our community, because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. Not saying that in a negative way, but it's true. I know one day that somebody's going to be visiting my funeral, but I also want to make sure that when I'm gone, people say, man, I learned a lot from him. He shares some great perspectives. So you can find me there. YouTube channel is getting built. It is published but we're going to be dropping some free content on there as well to help people out. But also make sure you come to the GovCon Blueprint community. You can subscribe to it at www.ultimategovconblueprint.com or you can go to my Instagram, go to the link in my bio, and you can find all those resources as well. As well. So yes, I want to say thank you all so much for having yeah. me on. This is a blessing uh, to be on these platforms just to be able to like let people know that government contract is not a scary place, y'all. Mm -mm. I'm telling you, it's very simple and easy, but the most... I want y'all to take this thing out your brain. The one thing people hold in their brain is it's the government and they're got all these crazy requirements. No, it's the government. The money they're using is, is, is the public's money. And so the public's money has to be governed by certain different requirements, but the work is the work. If you know how to bake cakes, if you know how to cut grass, right? The work is the work. That's it. Don't worry about the paperwork. The work is the work, all right? So The work is the work. Is That's the work. one message that people yeah, should definitely the get. Is the, work. the work is the work, man. I love it. It's a blessing to be a blessing. And, you know, Fox, I appreciate you again for hopping on here. Uh, to our listeners, I appreciate y'all tuning in every single Monday, week in, week out, giving us feedback, throwing in the comments. Just make sure y'all continue to smash that like button, hit subscribe, share it with a friend that needs this information. You just heard from Fox Wade with the GovCon blueprint. I'm your guy, Kai Speaks, and that's Heavy House Jazz. We out.